Hi guys, welcome back. Scanlink here and we are off for more of Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. In the last episode, we got halfway through this forest temple and I didn't mean to leave on such an abrupt note, but... Eh, I don't know, I just couldn't really think of anything. I just needed a little bit of a break because I had a bit of a motor mouth, in, motor mouth in the last episode. I think it's all the caffeine I've had. And in this episode, we're going to be doing the last half of the dungeon. I'm a little bit calmed down now. I mean, it's been like half an hour since my last recording, but I left the game on because there's no timer. Anyway, the reason why I started in this room and not the room that I said we were going to be in, which is the room with the bows, because we have to turn back the corridor back first so we can defy gravity. Like so. Now, once we get back into this room and jump in here... You want a nice refill on arrows, and there should be some pots in this room that may contain them if I haven't already broken them in this playthrough. Obviously, jumping over these banisters is a sure fire way of getting down quicker. And... I'm right. No, I'm wrong. I've actually broken these ones up already. Never mind then. So, in the last episode, we took about we took out one of four Poe sisters, and in this episode, hopefully, we'll be able to get... Um, the rest of them is knocked out. These pots don't have anything in them. Joy. So I've only got half my arrows remaining, which is just not what I wanted. And if you've realised since the last episode, where's the compass? We got the boss key, but we haven't even got the compass yet. And I have got all my arrows back. Stop chirping, bird. Being quite loud and put me off. Anyway. So, in this room, we've just got to do the same usual shenanigans again, or... How do I miss that? Excuse me, that arrow clearly hit the side. Yeah. Let's move to the side a bit there. I just couldn't be able to go out first person. So weird. I like that I like how that when you get the bow, it gives you the tutorial on how to use it when it's literally the exact same controls as the slingshot. Like I said in the last episode as well when we got it. And I'm not gonna waste my time with um Oh god. I just wanted a block, I didn't want to actually, like, you know. Get a. LZ targeting. I couldn't even remember the bloody name of it now. What's the matter with me? Last episode I have a motor mouth, and in this episode I can't even remember what things are. A thing. How do they work? Just gonna take my time because that's the fastest way of taking out these pose sisters. Damn it. Come on. It's taking forever. Boom! That wasn't the final hit, I thought it was. Boom. Sorted. And she dropped some arrows for me. Sweet. I could use those. And we get another big chest. Well, as we've already got the dungeon item of this... Well, the dungeon item was dungeon, obviously, which was the bow. And we've got the map and the boss key. This can only be one thing. You got the compass, which would have been a lot more helpful earlier on, so that we could have found all the keys to the small keys, but apparently not, because the game's a jerk like that, because if you pause right now and check your map, you've pretty much explored almost the entire dungeon already. Thank you for the compass game, we've only got like one or two chests left on the frickin' map. Ugh. I don't know, I don't understand on what their plan was on putting the compass that late in this dungeon. It's kind of useless considering that you need a lot of key. Look, you need all but one small key just to get this far. Where's the logic in that? I mean, I guess it helps you find the two small keys to get through this part, but I don't know. Anyway, yes, we've got uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. we've got uh, wall masters in this room now. Just like in the other room, it's quite symmetrical. But if you've noticed something in this in this room, the corridor's already straight. So we're gonna do a reverse on this room. Ah, now we get introduced to green bubbles. The only difference to the blue bubbles is that the blue buttons just fly around in a rat and pattern and boom in on you. Fire bubbles obviously are fire elemental. But the green ones just go in a circle, just blocking the way. Obviously, you don't even need to kill them, really. You could just walk right past them. But hey, we drop some goodies like hearts and deco nuts, which you possibly haven't used yet. Have you used deco nuts yet? I haven't, I know that, but we will be using them uh, near the end of the game, I guess. 
But yeah, we've got like a puzzle here. You don't want to be going into this water. It's poison. Yeah, it's death water. It's the return of death water. So we've got another one of these switches here, but it's encased in ice. How do we get rid of it? Fire, of course. You either use Din's fire if you have it already, or, which will, for some odd reason, turn on the switch. Or you could just do this. Shoot an arrow through the flames, it will light it on fire, and then once you hit the ice, apparently that works with the eyeballs well. And, yeah, that's how you get through. Now, to get out, if you do fall down, you, you won't be able to climb out from the actual entrance. Instead, you'll be able to climb a ladder to the actual eyeball switch. So what you got to do is ride this platform back around, if you do fall down, or not. And then you just want to jump on back, because, yeah, no ladders. Except for the one. Which is kind of dickish. And, it, and now I'm coming up to one of my favourite rooms in this dungeon, which is actually quite memorable. But can also be kind of a jerk if you not if you don't expect it, which, thankfully, Navi gives you a hint. I'm being kind of nice to Navi in this dungeon, giving her a lot of praise and everything. Trust me, once you play Skyward Sword, you know, you will love Navi a lot more than Fee. Um, let's see, do I? No, I actually want to go down here first, because if we go down here through this doorway, which is where we're not supposed to go, so don't jump down, make sure you have no, a forest wind if you're going to, you're back here. And if you get the camera angle to go down a little, you can actually see that right below us is that ch chest with the uh, recovery heart in it. Which means, this was also the place where the gold skull tiller is, so this is the easier way to get to it. But if you fall down, you're going to have to make your way all the way back to this part, which is pretty much going through the entire dungeon again. I'm not joking, this is pretty much like the final areas of this, dun of this dungeon now. Now, notice that the ceiling's going to fall. Obviously, the warning comes a little late, but she will still stop you from going anywhere near it. The ceiling's falling down, yes. In this checkerboard Harry Potter esque chess room, we've got. freaking. skull tillers that you have to kill in order to get into the safe spots, and of course, that heart had to get squished. Don't worry, it doesn't disappear. <laughs> But yes, when the screen is in this kind of mode, as you can see when I try to aim, I don't go into a first I don't go into like first person mode, but I can shoot in all directions. Because it gives you like this awesome mode and where you can like walk around while aiming. So I can actually shoot while running, which is pretty cool, but doesn't really help considering that you just want to target the enemy so you can actually shoot it, then stand in its place so you don't get squished. Because of course, they're hanging on for the ceiling, they have to get to the floor. How do they do that? By going through holes in the ceiling. Dury. I want to go all the way over there. Maybe it's not such a good idea to kill them with um, arrows because they go flying. Because if I kill them with the hook shot, they stay in place. But then again, the arrows pretty much guarantee that you're going to hit them and they're going to go somewhere. Get out of my way. Oh, I love this. When you open this chest, whee! Plop. Now, oh, wow. <laughs> we d I don't really want to see Link's manly chest, thank you. I'm not a woman. <laughs> I, I, I'm not I'm not into that. But yeah, um, if you do get squished by the ceiling, you'll just respawn at the beginning, of, well, in your last entered location for that room. Basically, you'll just respawn like you fell down a pit. But yeah, this room's given us uh, arrows, and there's only one portrait. Let's shoot it. Well, this was easy. Thank you, game. Oh, nope, that's not true. We've got a puzzle here. Four blocks are going to make the ghost, and one block isn't. You want to get the this block out of the way and you need to put the other ones away yeah uh, like together as one obviously you have a time limit but this puzzle is actually a little bit generous if you do somehow not make this puzzle in time it'll re it'll obviously reshuffle the blocks so you're gonna have to remake them but it gives you an extra 10 seconds every time you fail but i think it has a limit on how many times it adds 10 seconds to the time limit so i'm not too sure but this is easy enough, you just gotta pretty much make what's on the wall. And that's taking all the green puzzles and making the sister of course. The Poe sister of course. I can't talk today. Apparently I can talk in the last episode. Like I keep saying I had a motor mouth and I think it was the caffeine buzz at the time. But, I don't know. I think I've just burned off my energy. Hey buddy! Okay, you know what? I'm going to try my technique again. This time I'm not going to fail. Because I want to show this off. Because it's really fun. Yeah, like that. As you saw there, I got two hits. And she hasn't disappeared yet. 
Yeah, like that. Combos. I love them. And that's why I use the hookshot mostly against the, the Poe sisters instead of the bow and arrow. The bow and arrow is the most effective means, but it takes time. The sword is one of the quicker ways, but it is not the most effective. The hookshot's the trickiest, but it's definitely the most effective, as you can see right there. I must say, that was a fantastic display, even though I only got two hit combos. It's to prove to my point that I couldn't in the last episode, because I kept... Well, it wasn't my fault, they just kept moving to the left every time they got hit. But yeah, we got all, three out of four post sisters done, but... Oh, that was actually the wrong room! Okay, I would have been safe, never mind. <laughs> kind of panicked right there. Because I never take the wrong bloody door. First time I've actually done that in a while. And nothing in the pot. I must have already... Uh, yeah, of course I already smashed them. Doi! Okay, hey buddy. Now... For the next post sister, you do want to use the bow, because obviously it's the most quickest uh, means of attacking long-range enemies. Now, if you remember anything from my first Let's Play, um, Zelda Twilight Princess, and the fourth post I was kind of, is going to be kind of obvious. It functions exactly the same as it obviously takes reuse source material from this dungeon. But, if not, and you do not need to shoot the eye, by the way, unless you're going to go directly into that room, if you do not know the strategy, basically, the fourth Poe is actually waiting here, but it only appears after you've taken out all the other three and come through this door. Oh, Such a tortured soul. She looks so unhappy. But don't, but don't think that she's actually going to be remorseful. She wants revenge, and with the power of the Four Torch... Yeah, see what I did there. Four Sword, Four Torch, she splits. Yeah. The one that spins is the real one, and that's the one that's right here. Obviously it's going to be different for you, because, you know, it's randomised, but it's easy. Just stand in the middle, and shoot the one that spins. It's pretty obvious. And I believe, if I can remember from Twilight Princess, the real one's solidified, like, more than the rest of them. The other ones are like phantoms. Or something, but it's a lot more tougher in Twilight Princess. But yeah, it's very, this is like the easiest mini-boss ever. So yeah, this dungeon pretty much effectively has five mini bosses, or six mini bosses even. Two Stalfos fights, and each Poe sister. So yeah, this is definitely the dungeon with the most mini boss fights, excluding the final dungeon. Which we will re uh, reach pretty soon, actually, because unlike most Zelda games of nowadays, you do not have to do quite a lot to get to the next dungeon, like, oh, you gotta do this, you gotta go backtrack, you gotta go all the way around the Hyrule, like, one massive lap, and have a load of minigames open up to you, and then you can go to, the, like, the next one. No, you can just go straight to the next dungeon, like, bish, bash, bosh. Which is pretty awesome, because it gives you so much freedom what you want to do. So, we've killed all four, four Poe sisters, and the dungeons, and the, the final room of the dungeons opened up to us, which, if you've already checked your map, is pretty much right below us where we gotta go. But the only way to get there is obviously take all the way the Poe sisters. You want to stock up before you go down there, of course, because only an idiot would go down without actually stocking up. Down we go! Elevator going to the down floor. Hope you enjoyed our trip. Good luck. I don't know. Now, this room actually kind of stumped me quite a while as a kid until my dad showed me, and it was pretty weird. What you ought to do in this room is push the walls. I didn't know we were Hercules of all things. Or Chuck Norris. But yeah, you push the walls, the alcoves move, and they obviously open up other rooms in this room. Or mini rooms, so I say. And I should not be wasting arrows against these enemies. I should have my hook shot equipped. Because that's just the smartest thing to do. Don't worry, there's no more small keys at this point. So you don't really need to open these chests, but I would anyway, just because they're there and more just convenient to get because, well, they're there. Always check the alcoves, just to make sure you're not missing anything, even if they lead into dead ends, you may never know. I'm not going to say though. Pushing the walls, spinning around. This is such a weird room. I want to know how they actually made this room. It's kind of interesting. Ah, this is a dud. Okay, next push. I might be pushing the room, the, like the wall in the wrong direction, but... Whatever works, works. I just do whatever, just to get through this room. This room has a switch. And... Gold Skull Tiller? Nope, it's not there. Why am I getting the feeling that I've actually missed a Gold Skull Tiller? Because I think I might. 
Maybe it's because I've been blazing through this dungeon so fast I might have actually forgot one. I don't think I have, though. I might have, but I don't think I have. I think I know where I missed it, though. Because it is kind of a doozy. I think it's where those hearts were on the pillars, so if I did miss it after I get the one in this room, because I definitely know there's one in this room, I'll go get it. So... It's this alcove next, isn't it? Or is that the one I've already done? It's the one I've already done. Where was the one I opened up? God damn it. Am I pushing the... I'm definitely not pushing the wall in the correct direction. And yet, I, when I say that, I'm still pushing it in the exact same direction I've been doing for the past couple of minutes. Logic. Ugh. There it is. This is the room because the switch is now available to me. And there's nothing there. So it opens the final switch. Yeah, it's pretty much just switch, switch, switch. So now I want to push the wall this way so I can actually get through that locked door. Because I can hear the gold skull tiller. go and let me guess I definitely have missed it haven't I there it is how did I miss that it was with the chest doi grab the token thank you how do I keep missing I I swear I've missed it yep I've missed it of course I'm such a douche let me open the door and then I'll get out of this room I claim I'm an expert at the game, and of course I miss easy to miss Gold Skull Tiller. Well, it is easy to miss, because, you know, you could fall after getting the hearts. But I know where it is, so we don't have to backtrack that far. And there's the final switch. No, that's the one I pressed. God damn it! Why am I doing so terrible in this room? <sighs> this is an LP as bad day. I knew I was going to get them sometime soon. That's an empty alcove. You know what? Just, just push it back to normal. That's probably what I've got to do anyway, so let's just do it. Because the button I've got to press is right behind me, isn't it? Because it's the final switch, of course. Three. What's the with me? Right. Now that the door to the actual f boss door is open, I'm going to meet you back where I missed that freaking gold skull tiller. Ugh. Oh, I knew it! It was with the hearts on the p on the bloody pillar stand thing. Grr. Uh, you know what that means. I'm gonna have to twist the bloody corridor so I can fall back down through that hole where the boss key was in order to get onto that ledge so I can get to the post so I can get those recovery hearts so I can get the gold skull tiller. Grr. So much work for one gold skull tiller. It's ridiculous. If I got it when I was there because I, I had a feeling it was there but I didn't want to go for it because it was out of the way. But, of course I was actually right, I wasn't thinking of Master Quest. Ugh. You see, that's the problem when you play Master Quest right after playing the original. You get mixed up. Because, fun fact, actually, the, the Forest Temple is actually easier. Well, I don't know if it's easier or not, but I do know it's somewhat simpler in some rooms with Master Quest. I mean, the Water Temple Master Quest is so much easier. So easy, in fact, that you don't actually need a key, well, one key to finish it. But anyway, enough talk because I'm going to cut back now. To the Gold Skull Tiller. You know what I'm going for. Why am I telling you this? I'm cutting now. Blip. Squadala! I am back. Okay, let's go get this bloody Gold Skull Tiller. Ugh. So you have to come all the way through here after untwisting the bloody thing, and then you got to walk over here perpetually across here, which I was going to do, but I didn't in the end, and I should have, because I knew the Gold Skull Tiller was here, I was thinking of a freaking Master Quest. At least I remember something about Master Quest, I mean, god damn, but anyway, I've got the freaking Gold Skull Tiller, I'll meet you back at the bloody boss door, because you don't need to see me go down that bloody lift again, and what the hell happened there? Whatever, I'm going back. Thanks. Uh, some LP here I turned out to be. I can't. I'm messing up on one of my most beloved games. Uh, my first LP was had excuses because it wasn't exactly a game I played the most, but I did know how to do most of it. But yeah. Anyway, on to the boss, where I cannot possibly mess up with unless the LP curse decides to be a douche. We got an ominous blue glow in this room, and 
A lot of portraits. Hmm. This isn't too bad. I mean, I guess all the images are the same, so it's kind of a crappy gallery. And the boss doesn't seem to be here. Boss! What have you done with Saria? Hmm, I guess he's not home. You know what, we'll come back later when we restock. Uh-oh. Oh my god, it's Janin and his minion! <laughs> Joke's on you, asshole! I'm not the real one! Even though I would like to be, I am the evil spirit from beyond Phantom Ganon! <laughs> Super Mario 64 portal, away! So yes, Phantom Ganon. He's gonna be a bit different, but he will become the Phantom Ganon we all know and love. But first of all, you wanna go into first person and just watch the images. There'll be a real one and a fake one, as you can see right here, he's coming through two of them. The real one is the lighter version, who's more centered in the actual pathway. And that's the one you want to shoot. The fake one is off to the left of it. Well, it depends on your perspective, really, because depending on your angle when you're standing in the middle of the room. That's not the one, I believe. No, it is the one. If he comes all the way out, he's going to throw a lightning bolt at the floor, which will pretty much cover a star-shaped worth of electric bolts and do massive damage to you and take you out of first-person mode and paralyze you for a couple of seconds so you won't be able to use any weapons, just like Baronade. So, yeah, a few properties from him got turned, but once you hit him with his steed with three arrows, his steed will flee and basically you've got to do the old classic baseball badminton routine. And I didn't time it right because he was way too close to me. Yeah, he can be at any range and still get you like a cheap ass wipe. But hey, do a jump attack, yeah, go targeting and or Z targeting and just stab him using the crouch stab glitch. Which I if I've haven't talked about before already, pretty much means your last attack is carried over to your stab when crouching, and that pretty much means great camera angle. It pretty much means that if you do a jump attack and then crouch, you're pretty much doing quick jump attacks in succession by stabbing. Because you've carried the power from your jump attack over to your stab. Come on, stop giving me dickish camera angles and let me actually get this right. Actually, do I have an empty bottle? Yes, yes I do. Oh, I wanted to do this. Falcon, punch! Falcon, punch! Falcon, punch! Falcon, punch! Chuck Norris's fist. Really? 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 Come on! Thank you! Chuck Norris's fist wins the day, because that was the last thing I actually said. You can't get up, dude. Oh, yep, you should did. Never mind. <laughs> that was actually one of the best rounds I've had. Also one of the longest valley, uh, volleys I've had as well. You know what, I'm going to keep using the bottle just because I'm a badass. Boop! Punch it. Punch it real good. Do 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 I know it's push it, but you know. Wallop! Ah, uh, I missed. There we go, sorted. You got Falcon punched, bitch! Or Chuck Norris fist, I don't know. One of the two. It was awesome nevertheless. It was blue! And he's burning. I'm a burning. Hey kid, you did quite well. Looks like you may be gaining some slight skill. But you have defeated only my phantom. When you fight the real me, it won't be so easy. What a worthless creation that ghost was. I will banish it to the gap between dimensions. Because apparently I... I work for Star Trek Enterprise, apparently. Dimensions! Ha ha! So after Phantom Ganon gets whisked off to the dimensions by... Uh, Dr. Chaotica of all things, we get a heart container. And we pretty much await not only start a new line of health, but we've also awakened Saria. So, let's take the warp to get out of here and see what happened to Saria. With my shield out. Because why the hell not? At least the boss kind of made up for my confidence in terms of like messing up on that gold skull tiller. That was awesome though. I only got hit, like, once. That was it. 
because it was literally too close and I couldn't hit the ball. Because depending on the angle, you won't be able to hit the ball. So back in the Chamber of Sages, and oh my god, she came out of the pad. Thank you. Because of you, I could awaken as a sage. I'm sorry, the sage of the Forest Temple. I always believed that you would come, because I know you. No. You don't have to explain it to me. Because it is destiny that you and I can't live in the same world. Yeah, I know, it's kind of annoying, isn't it? I will stay here as the Forest Sage and help you. Now, please take this oversized novelty coin. Hee -hoo. You received the forest medallion. Saria awakens as a sage and adds her power to yours. And not only that, you can still talk to Saria with Saria's song. No problems there. Saria will always be your friend. Why is she talking the third person in this part? I have no clue why. Unless that's Link's thought processes. I never got that. I never understood that. But it's not done yet. Why have we walked in front of the Decatrice corpse? Who knows? <gasps> it's a Pikmin! Before the GameCube! Look, let's pluck it. Hey, wait, what the... <laughs> he just screams, but he's just lying down there, like, not even a foot away from the bloody thing. Hi there, I'm the Deco Tree Sprout. Because you and Saria broke the curse on the Forest Temple, I can grow and flourish. Thanks a lot. And apparently I'm sparkling with the forest, I have no clue why. Hey, have you seen your old friends? None of them recognised you with your grown-up body, did they? Actually, I never talked to any of the Kikiri beforehand, but we'll get into that in the next episode, because after this episode I'm off-screen, I'm going to save in Link's house so that we start back here. So I don't have to walk all the way back here, or use the warp. That's because the Kikiri never grow up. Even after seven years, they're still kids. It's kind of a genetic trait. You must be wondering why only you have grown up. Well, as you might have already guessed, you are not a Kikiri, you are actually a Hylian. Of course. I am happy to finally reveal this secret to you. This is, okay, now, in terms of Link's character, this is actually pretty cruel on how he words this. I am happy to finally reveal this secret to you. Keep that quote in your head for this cutscene. Just saying. This is pretty much Link's backstory. Some time ago, before the King of Hyrule unified this country, there was a fierce war in our world. Now, how does the Deku Tree Sprout know all this? It's because the Deku Tree passed it over with his sprout or something, I don't get it. But, you know. Plot! One day, to escape from the fires of the war, Hylian mother and a baby boy entered this forbidden forest. The mother was gravely injured. Her only choice was to entrust the child to the Deku Tree, the guardian spirit of the forest, of course. The Deco Tree could sense that this was a child of destiny whose fate would affect the entire world, so he took him into the forest. Don't see how he could take him in because he's a tree. He has no arms. How can he walk? After the mother passed away, the baby was raised as a Kikiri, and now finally the day of destiny has come. Have you worked it out yet? You are a Hylian, and were always bound to leave the, this forest. And now, you have learnt your own destiny, so you know what you must do. That's right, you must save the land of Hyrule. Thank you for telling me something I already know, but I'm really angry about something. Now let's get Link, break the curses on all the temples, and return peace to Hyrule. I am finally happy to receive this that to reveal this secret to you. Your mother is dead. Thank you very much, you freaking sprout. It's a shame that you're invincible because I'm murder your face with spins and bombs and stuff like that. You know what? Blow up. I don't care. 
But anyway, after I blowed up his brains after telling Link to his face that his mother passed away because of him being Destiny and all that and the freaking war, in the next episode, guys, we will... Well, find out where we got to go next. But I may not be doing that. Instead, I might be doing something different in my own way. But that'll be for later. See you guys then. While I go home and take a nap. <laughs>